Hey there team, it's finally here by popular demand. We got it done. All the lore of classic World of Warcraft. So, as usual, I'm going to give y'all a fair warning that I will not be covering every single quest chain and character, but instead I'll be going over all of the big important stuff that happened in Vanilla WoW that would lead to important events and moments in games that followed. I'll be skipping some stuff, cutting some stuff, and rearranging some other things to make the narrative flow better. The usual. So with that, let's get right to it. This is all the lore of classic World of Warcraft. The third war, which was Warcraft 3, has come and gone. After pushing back the Burning Legion and establishing their own capital city, Orgrimmar, the Orcish Horde has finally found themselves a home. The Horde was made up of Orcs, Trolls, and Tarn, and while the Tarn have moved to the grassier plains of Mogor, the Orcs and Trolls have settled in Duratar. The top priorities of the Horde are to maintain their new borders, handle the wildlife within their new lands, and remove any lingering demon threat still lurking in Kalimdor. Meanwhile, the Night Elves have joined the Alliance of Humans, Dwarves, and Gnomes, who have been here the whole time. Lately, the Elves have had to deal with their world tree being destroyed in order to stop Archimonde, but it turns out a totally new giant tree was planted and raised off the coast of Kalimdor, which now acts as the new home for the Night Elves. They are still in contention for their land with their new neighbors, the Horde. The Night Elves are also cleaning up Kalimdor from the demon invasion, destroying demons and cleansing any corrupted areas. And on the other side of the world, in the lands of Dun Moreau, between Lordaeron and Stormwind, the Mountain Dwarves are housing their good friends the Gnomes in the Dwarven city of Ironforge. Since the Gnomes recently got evicted from their capital Gnomergon, the Dwarves and Gnomes fight together against the Leper Gnome invasion that have taken over the Gnomish land, as well as trying to stop the Dark Iron Dwarves from invading Ironforge and fighting the Dark Horde from expanding beyond their hold over Black Rock Mountain. Uh, meanwhile, up north, the Forsaken who follow Sylvanas Windrunner have taken up refuge in the Undercity, beneath the ruins of Capital City in the Eastern Kingdoms. The Forsaken have allied themselves with the Orcs and have joined the Horde. Even though they are now members of the Honorable Horde, the Undead still don't play by the same rules as an Orc Warrior or Human Knight would. There's still a lot of scheming and a lot of distrust for the undead. The Forsaken are mainly focused on dealing with the leftover Scourge that still serve the Lich King, and the humans that still reside in the Eastern Kingdoms. Alliance, or otherwise. And finally, down south, the humans of the rebuilt Stormwind were not involved in the Third War. Instead, they were dealing with their own problems, mainly the Dark Horde that keeps pushing on their northern borders, the banded group that defies Brotherhood that is attacking and looting all over human-controlled lands, and the mysterious disappearance of their king, Varian Rin. Varian Rin is the king of the humans of Stormwind. He kind of... kind of like disappeared and didn't really help at all in Warcraft 3 because he was in a magically enhanced depression. One day, he randomly wakes up from it and decides to go and visit Jaina Proudmoore in Dustwild Marsh. On his way there, he gets captured by the Defias. There is a, a whole thing that happens with Varian, but it's hard to decipher what is and isn't canon from those events. Plus, Varian does not show up in the actual game of World of Warcraft until the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. So the only thing that matters about Varian in Classic is that he is missing and Varian's son, Anduin Rin, is put in charge of Stormwind while his dad is gone. Anduin is counseled by two parties, Bolvar Fordragon and Katrana Prestor. While fighting some Dark Iron Dwarves and Dragonkin the Burning Steps, the Alliance member Marshall Windsor, also known as Goldshire Footman, was captured and taken to Black Rock Mountain, home of the Dark Iron Dwarves and a bunch of other baddies. A group of Alliance heroes goes into Blackrock to free Windsor, who also has some serious information regarding the Blackrock orcs teaming up with a Black Dragonflight. Once Windsor is free from Blackrock Mountain, he returns to Stormwind where he and Bolvar confront Katrana Prestor, revealing her to be Onyxia, daughter of Deathwing, and the one responsible for capturing Varian 
as well as many other crimes throughout the past decade. Anixia flees to her lair in Duswala Marsh, which the Alliance eventually assaults, killing her in the end. Meanwhile, Moira Bronzebeard, princess of the dwarven city of Ironforge, was kidnapped by Dark Iron Dwarves and taken to the Dark Iron City located in the depths of Black Rock Mountain. Her father, Magni Bronzebeard, sent a squad of heroes into Black Rock Mountain to rescue her. This resulted in the death of the leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves, Emperor Daegrand Tharason, who was Moira's jailer, but ended up being her lover and eventually the father of her child. It turns out, while the Dark Iron Dwarves aren't the nicest of people in usual circumstances, they were also being controlled by the elemental fire lord Ragnaros, having their minds poisoned over time eventually becoming slaves to the Fire Lord's will. Ragnaros and his army of elementals dwelled even deeper in the mountain's core, its molten core. And while Moira fled to stay with the Dark Irons, the ragtag heroes would go off into molten core and defeat Ragnaros, ending his control of the Dark Iron Dwarves, stopping the funneling of fire elementals into Azeroth, and earning some sweet gear along the way. Ragnaros wasn't the only lord residing in Black Rock Mountain. The Fire Lord was in a constant struggle for control of Black Rock against Nefarian, eldest son of Deathwing and leader of the Black Dragonflight surrounding Black Rock Mountain, as well as the Dark Iron Horde that dwells inside. Nefarian is trying to achieve his father's dreams of reviving the Black Dragonflight, and to do that, the Black Dragon has gathered dragons from all other flights and experimented on them to create the new Chromatic Dragonflight. With the Black Dragons aiding the Dark Horde, the War Chief of the Horde, the Normal Horde, the Horde Horde, Thrall, sent some champions into Black Rock Mountain to put a stop to the Dark Horde and their allies, the Black Dragonflight. The Horde champions teamed up with the red dragon Valestraz, who helped sneak them into Black Rock Spire, where they fought a bunch of Black Rock orcs, trolls, ogres, and dragonkin. After clearing out Black Rock Spire and killing the Dark Horde Warchief, Renda Blackhand, the group moved on to take out Nefarian. However, Nefarian was able to possess Valestraz and bend him to the Black Dragon's will. The champions would kill their former companion and shut down all of the chromatic dragonflight experiments, finally leading to a confrontation against the head honcho himself, Nefarian. Fire Lord banished, the Dark War Chief executed, the Dwarf Emperor assassinated, and the Black Dragon decapitated, both Alliance and Horde champions left Black Rock Mountain in ruins. 1500 years before the Dark Portal was first opened, there was a massive empire that dominated most of the southern and eastern kingdoms. The Gurubashi Empire. This massive troll empire served their god of death, Hakkar the Soul Flayer. However, there was a civil war and the empire crumbled, with some of the more zealot surviving Gurubashi priests escaping from their capital of Zolgarub to the Swamp of Sorrows. There, the troll priests created the Temple of Atal Hakkar, where they planned to summon the Blood God into Azeroth. The green dragon aspect, Ysera, got wind of the troll's plans, and her and her flight destroyed the temple, sinking it into the swamp. She then left some green dragons to watch over the place, to make sure nothing bad ever happened again. Fast forward to World of Warcraft time, and those green dragons had succumbed to the corruption of the Emerald Nightmare, as well as the corruption of Hakkar. The blood of the green dragons became fuel to bring the blood god into Azeroth, while their bodies were used as sentinels against intruders. A group of adventurers were sent into the sunken temple of Hatal Hakkar by a few curious parties, including a troll named Yak Kenya, who feared that the temple was close to summoning the blood god and provided an ancient egg to the adventurers, which could be used to trap Hakkar's essence. The sunken temple was cleaned out by the heroes who killed all the troll priests and corrupted green dragonflight, finally confronting the avatar of Hakkar and sealing his essence in the ancient egg. When the egg was returned to Yeh Kenya, it was revealed that the troll was secretly a worshipper of the Soul Flayer, and he then brought Hakkar's essence to Zolgarub the original capital of the Gurubashi Trolls, where the Blood God was then brought into Azeroth. 
Hearing rumors that the Gurubashi had successfully summoned Hakkar, the king of the Zandalari trolls had sent an entourage of troll priests into Zolgarub. But just like the green dragons in the sunken temple, the Zandalari priests also fell under the corruption of Hakkar. With the blood god alive and gaining ever more powerful inside the ancient troll city, the Darkspear tribe was called on for aid and the might of the Horde along with them. The Horde champions dove into Zolgarub and cleaned it out of all the blood god worshippers, the corrupted priests, and even defeating the blood god himself. Around a thousand years ago, in southern Kalimdor, there was a giant war between the insectoid Karaji and the Alliance of Night Elves and Dragons. This was called the War of the Shifting Sands, and it was brutal since the Karaji were unending, and many Night Elves and Dragons died in the conflict. Eventually, the insectoids were pushed back into their fortress of Ankaraj. The Night Elves used their druidic magic combined with the power of the dragons to erect a giant magical barrier known as the Scarab Wall, which would then seal away the monstrous Karaji and their dark, mysterious master in the heart of the Silithus Desert for a thousand years. Now, in the era of Vanilla Well, the descendants of Ankaraj are stirring, and they plan on coming back to lay waste to the lands of Azeroth once again. The heroes of the Horde and the Alliance rallied together into the force known as the Might of Kalimdor, and they ventured into the ruined city. The Might of Kalimdor would defeat the Karaji, and fight their way into the city center where the Old God Cthun awaited them. The Old God was slain and the Karaji forces were laid to rest. With the rising of the Scourge during the Third War, several members of the illustrious Paladin Order, the Knights of the Silver Hand, or slain. The remaining members who stayed in the undead-filled Lordaeron were led by High Lord Alexandros Morgrain and Sadon Deathrohan, who continuously held off the undead scourge from advancing into their stronghold of Hearthglen. The Silver Hand was able to fight back against the scourge, winning some fights and, and even setting up some strongholds outside of Hearthglen in the process mainly the Scarlet Monastery located nearby the now forsaken occupied Lordaeron ruins and retaking parts of the ruined city of Stratholm. However, during a battle against the undead in Stratholm, Commander Sadon Deathrohan was killed and his corpse was possessed by the dreadlord Balnazar, who had faked his death by the hand of his brother Veramanthras back in Warcraft 3. Balnazar then manipulated the son of Alexandrus Mograine, Reynault, to kill his father, tainting Mograine's legendary weapon, the Ashbringer, as well as silencing the only threat of leadership to Balnazar's position as head of the Silver Hand. Balnazar then decided to rename the Knights of the Silver Hand to the Scarlet Crusade, with their main objective being to wipe out all they considered evil in Azeroth by any means necessary. The indiscriminate slaughter and torture the Scarlet Crusade began enacting on not just the undead, but of non-human races too, was too much for some members, and they branched off and formed a different order known as the Argent Dawn. While the Scarlet Crusade would continue their Scarlet Crusade of blood and death of all that opposed them, the Argent Dawn was focused on allying itself with all races in hopes of setting up a united defense against the undead Scourge, infesting the plague lands of the Eastern Kingdoms. The three factions began skirmishing in the Eastern Plague Lands, the Zealous Scarlet Crusade, the Noble Argent Dawn, and the Neverending Scourge. The right hand of the Lich King, the Lich Kel'Thuzad, had led an assault on the Eastern Kingdoms, hovering his floating base of operations, Nax Ramus, above the Scarlet-infested city of Stratholm. In Stratholm, the Scarlet Crusade waged war against Kel'Thuzad's minions. However, a young member of the Argent Dawn was planning on leading a strike force into the ever-burning city and invading the undead fortress of Naxxramas. While Alexandrus Mograin was murdered by his oldest son, Renault, his youngest son, Darien Mograin, would fight against the Scourge and the Scarlet Crusade. Darien assaulted Nax, and inside, his team of Argent Dawn members would cut away enough of the forces inside that the floating city was practically gutted. The final encounter Darien and his team faced was against the Four Horsemen, 
powerful death knights under the Lich King's command, and the leader of the horsemen was Darien's father, Alexandros Mograine, wielding the corrupted Ashbringer. After the fight, Darien was the only survivor, and he left Naxxramas, taking the Ashbringer with him. When Darien returned to Light's Hope Chapel, the home base of the Argent Dawn, it was under attack by Kel'Thuzad. In this confrontation, Darien sacrificed himself by piercing his own heart with his father's corrupted sword, freeing the soul of the older Mograine and destroying the attacking undead forces. However, Darien's soul was lost to the Scourge, and Kel'Thuzad retreated with a new Death Knight. Bolvar Fordragon would later call upon heroes of the Alliance to aid the Argent Dawn in their time of need, and the Alliance forces alongside the Argent Dawn would assault the weakened Naxxramas and kill Kel'Thuzad. However, to kill a Lich, you have to destroy their phylactery, and while the phylactery of Kel'Thuzad was handed over to a High Priest of the Argent Dawn, the Holy Order claims to have never received it. They were betrayed, and Kel'Thuzad's phylactery, as well as a High Priest of the Argent Dawn, went missing. And that is all the main lore of Classic WoW. I covered mainly the broad strokes of the endgame, since while lore gets really messy with what is and isn't canon, with books saying one thing, the game saying another thing, and then the game retconning itself and saying a totally different thing, and so on and so on. But if you just play Classic WoW, all of this info was correct in that context. So time for me to say the stuff. Thanks for watching. I skipped some things here, skipped some things there, but all in all, this is all the stuff you need to know. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and take it easy.